An essential component in Tobias's model for the origin of Homo was the use of stone tools. The use of stone tools tied together the other observations that Tobias was making in the record of Olduvai Gorge. And at the time these discoveries were made in the early 60s, it was the earliest association of stone tools with human fossils in the fossil record. These earliest tools that were being discovered by Tobias and others were what we refer to as Oldowan tools. And Oldowan tools are, in retrospect, seemingly very simple. Oftentimes it simply consists of a core that's had several flakes knocked off, off of it. But this simple tool allowed for humans to expand their dietary ecology in very different directions. By creating both a pounding instrument, something that can break open bone, and also creating cutting edges through both the flakes and the core itself, hominins had suddenly a toolkit available to them, something that allowed them to do different things. And one of the things that they were doing was clearly taking advantage of meat resources and animal resources through the butchery of animal carcasses. We find concurrent with the earliest evidence of stone tools, evidence of cut marks, of butchery of those fossil animals. The butchery of animal carcasses using these stone tools, both as percussion instruments and cutting elements, allowed hominins to access a lot of new resources. They could access meat, which is a very high quality food item, but they could even more importantly perhaps access fat resources that were unavailable to them. Fat is an incredibly valuable resource from an evolutionary perspective. It provides a huge amount of energy per unit volume, and it's something that was very scarce on the African landscape. If you look at the kind of African fauna that early hominins may have been eating, things like antelope, they have very little fat within their meat. Their meat is incredibly lean. It's almost a pure source of protein, which is nice, but actually protein needs to be balanced by other nutrient elements in order to be properly digested and really provide an advantage. Fat is one way of doing that. Now a good source of fat actually comes from within the bones themselves, in the marrow cavities of bones, or in parts of the skeleton such as the brain that are hard to access simply by using our hands. Stone tools would have allowed hominins to break open these bones, get access to the marrow or brain or other kinds of high quality food resources. Stone tools might have also allowed hominins to get access to things like tendons or cartilage or hide that could have been secondarily utilized to carry objects or store water. So stone tools would have allowed for a lot of different elements or a lot of different changes in human dietary ecology. Now also, these Oldowan stone tools, again, they're simple, oftentimes simply cores and flakes, but they're also very expedient. Most Oldowan tools that we find are fairly locally gathered. They're not carrying them necessarily very long distances. Nevertheless, early hominins already appear very quickly to be fairly selective, choosing higher quality stones as their basis for stone tools. Stones that have good flaking properties, that retain an edge for a longer period of time, have finer grain so that they're able to cut better. So although seemingly very simple, Oldowan tools are an important marker of very key and fundamental changes in human evolutionary history. They represent a use of cognitive abilities to create material objects that solve evolutionary problems. These tools allowed humans to access new food resources, perhaps new material resources, they reflect an awareness of time and place and an ability to expediently use objects out of their environment for a multitude of different purposes, and the ability to recognize good from bad products, stones that might make good tools and stones that might not make good tools. So they're an important reflection of cognitive as well as behavioral development in early homo.